they suck a cow, they suck a goat, they suck anything. They even suck a bottle. You ever try to take a bottle from a baby? What? My bottle. And if it gets empty, they throw it at you. Who taught them that? You ever, come on, help me. You ever think about it? Nobody taught that kid to throw that bottle at you. Something's going on. You get them to come all out of you and you be like, oh, que linda. And then they be like, ooh, ah, hey, oy vey. They start stinking, then, you know, come on, help me. You realize you ain't all that cute. You're human. <laughs> They're not a doll. That's how it is with love. See, you fall in love with people that give you something. Otherwise, you're infatuated with them. That's why when you talk on the phone with people late at night, you're going to get hooked because you're in fantasy land. You know they ugly, and you be like, oh, I see you, you're so handsome. <laughs> they look like Godzilla. <laughs> but because your eyes are closed, you're able, with infatuation, to imagine what they look like. Then you meet them, and you're like, ah. No, no, that's not what they No, 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 how about Espanol? Come on. All I'm trying to tell you is that the same thing happens with our faith. It's a work in progress. You're walking with God. He's teaching you step by step how to act like him. And you have to take the challenge. You can't just, you can't just go to church and say, I like the church. I like the choir. I like that pastor. Come on, you can go to hell with that stuff. You better walk with Jesus. You better know how to hear his voice. You got people in churches 40 years and still don't know the Lord. I've been on the missionary bench all these years. You should get up off that bench, get in the game, and get somebody saved. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking bad, but it's just the reality. You gotta, you're going to have to answer for this. I want to walk by faith. Amen. I'm almost done. Y'all still here? Only three of y'all left. Go to real quick to Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Because when certain things happen in our lives, we don't even know it's God doing it. In this particular story, now you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about you have to remain constant in your faith. You have to be plugged into God continually. I, I like to use the analogies, and I hope they're not offensive to you. If you've ever been in love, you know, like, People, people are funny, right? When they want to have sex with somebody else, you know, they say, I don't love you like I used to. <laughs> you little devil. <laughs> when they want to get a divorce, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. You lying devil. Some little fornicated uh, going to sniff your little, no, my, you don't sniff on some fornicated, and now you want out. I'm not in love with you no more. I love you. Stop that, you lying dog. You want to fornicate. You want to be... People are sick. They, they, everybody got the same line. It ain't like it used to be. Come on. You got to fall in love. Because once you're in love, that means it's for, your, for their sake. How are you going to fall out of love for their sake? They still ugly. They still mean. What you're saying is, I'm tired of you. I thought you would be looking better by now. <laughs> Mike, you know I'm telling the truth. Everybody, all right, y'all, y'all have fun if y'all want to. That's why you got young kids, young daughters. Don't let them date. Throw a lock on them. You know, buy some pants that if 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 they open their pants, like blue smoke go up. And, and you know, you see the smoke and you run to that house. <laughs> Do something. Oh, wow, woo! Put like a little alarm on their drawers. If their drawers move the wrong way at the wrong time, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and these, I mean, these kids need protection. I mean, they tongue kissing each other at three years old. Tongue kissing is worse than sex. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You spitting down somebody else's throat thinking you enjoying it. Look at them. Ain't nobody say, ugh, because they all doing it. 
Tastes good. <laughs> All right. If I can't have fun. See, I, Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Here's Peter. Now watch this. All I'm trying to tell you is that you can be better. You can all be better than the church people that you know. We can talk about anybody, but how about you? It's easy to criticize, but how about you? You know how bad they are, but how about you? I wasn't born saved. I got saved at 26. So I was old when I got in the game. Now, here's the story. I'm going to read it because I need to tell you in the beginning so that when you see it, faith comes by hearing and also by seeing the word of God. Here's Peter. The Jews decide we're going to kill some people to, to, to get some credit. So they catch James, kill him, cut his head straight off. Can I tell you why? Because the church wasn't listening. Jesus told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. But guess what? They were having fellowship. <laughs> you know how church people do to get some fried chicken and talk about each other. <laughs> Here they are, chilling out. Instead of going out. They caught, they caught up to James. They, they, they didn't even give him a trial. They cut his head off. And they said, and they said yay! Not the church, but the people like, yeah, we got rid of one of them. And they said, let's get Peter there. So they went to catch Peter, put him in jail, and they was going to cut his head off in front of everybody. But the church, they found out what happened to James, so they started praying. So don't forget me for laughing, because I'm I thank God I'm not there. Only reason I'm laughing because I'm here and he in heaven. I wouldn't be laughing if he was like in hell somewhere. I wouldn't be laughing. So they went to get him. The Bible said in the church, prayed unto God without ceasing. Many times you got gaps in your attack when you stop praying. Jesus said men ought sometime to pray. He said always to pray. You can't pray and stop praying and don't expect a gap. Prayer is spiritual warfare. It's putting a hedge around you. Once you stop praying, there's a gap. And Satan oftentimes creates the gap. He makes you a religious person. He'll give you a prayer schedule. And he knows when you're not going to pray. And when you're not going to pray is when he attacks. That's why he said men always to pray. Imagine, you know... Can I bother you, Mike? No, I'll leave you alone. All right, I'm going to leave you alone. I don't nobody else to bother. All right, no, I'm not going to bother you. Imagine, I need to, no, I can't use Mike. I got to use somebody else. You know else to use? Everybody done split up for me. I needed a couple. You guys a couple? You guys a couple, right? Can I bother you? Come on. It's only a second time here. Come on. <laughs> I needed a couple. Her husband's way in, in Alabama, and he looked nervous once I stayed. I wanted to borrow something. Come over here for one second. Now you're a good-looking guy. You're a nice-looking looking lady. Now imagine if you love her all the time, right? And then imagine you decide not to love her, right? Somebody else is going to say, well, can I love her at that time? Were you not loving her? That's an example. <laughs> Right? That's what happens when we don't love at all times. People be like, yo, you all right? <laughs> yo, you all right? He, 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 you know, he ain't doing the right thing. He be like, man, he, he only there Monday through Friday. But like, what? What you doing Saturday? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Every slick dog dude, he ain't get it from another slick dog dude. He got it from the devil dog himself. <laughs> so when we have gaps in our prayer life, 
Because men ought always to pray. Satan be like, I got you. You ain't praying on Thursdays? Oh, that's the day I attack you and your kids. You ever wonder, you ever notice how you have bad days? Why do you have a bad day? What didn't you do? He's not, he's not tired. He's a devil. He's attached to attack. Yeah, remember, well, I grew up in a different era where they had two dogs. They had two, three types of dogs. Mutt, German Shepherd, Doberman Pinscher. You had a Dobie, everybody thought he was going to bite you. Now they got all kind of pets. They didn't even, I don't even know where they got them from. They must have just came on the, in the country or something. They never, they, they're like cats. Canine cats or something. <laughs> but if you had an attack dog, Everyone that saw that dog would respond accordingly. Satan is like an attack dog. And when you see him, you respond accordingly. But if you're a master, you look at any attack dog and say, you come over here, I'm going to take your teeth right out your mouth and stick you with them. Come on. So when we have gaps in our spiritual walk, that's the door. And Satan comes in. He comes in through the... See, he's not... Anybody here don't eat vegetables? See, if you don't eat vegetables, your body will deteriorate. You have to eat a balanced meal every day or you're going to get a headache. Something's going to happen or your bowel's going to get constricted. You're going to say, well, that's the devil's a lie. No, you need to eat right. Blaming that devil for your ignorance. Got a headache. Oh, Satan trying to kill me. Your, your, your pH is off. Drink you some water. Get some hydrogen up in your body. Who's saying trying to kill me? I'm going to tell you to drink water. Huh? I'm not. I'm trying to finish here. Can we do this last one? We, can we read this and then I, I'll close? I can't even do it. It's so long. Verse 3. Acts 12, 3. And because he's because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. We're in Acts chapter 12. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. That word Easter should have been the word Passover. That's why we have a problem now in April when Easter comes around. People think that Christians celebrate Easter. We don't celebrate Easter. We celebrate the resurrection. Easter is a holiday that the pagans celebrate when they talk about the fertility goddess with all the breasts. That's why you have the bunny rabbits because they breed a lot and the eggs. That's Easter. See, they use the wrong word in this translation just so you can understand it. Around Easter, I will be telling you that again. <laughs> Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer. Somebody say, but prayer. but prayer. Was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. See, the reason why I'm saying this is because somebody here will get the desire to do the right thing all the time. You know how marriages work? When one person in the marriage does the right thing all the time. It doesn't take two people to do it. It takes two people to make both people happy, but it just takes one of them to make it work. You might not believe that, but it will work with one person. Because look at your relationship with the Lord. You ain't always doing the right thing. But you still call yourself saved. Amen. It's still working, isn't it? Amen. So if you get yourself a good person that loves you unconditionally, you can make it work. He just keeps walking over me. Uh, make it work. See, we don't want to. We don't want to be walked over. We're human. But that's why when you do decide to get married, decide to be the bridge. Come on, I'm, I'm trying to help you. Look at yourself like we treat Jesus. Put him on the shelf one time, take him off next time. Come on, help me. So when you look at marriage, don't, don't, don't think, oh, they, they're not treating me right. Maybe you're not responding right. I'm not saying that they're right, but you still have to respond. They smite you on one side, you don't just deck like a showman. <laughs> Show enough. <laughs> Who
who's the master? <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> I got to watch out for my flashbacks. All the young people have no idea what I was talking about. Eric knows. Cleo knows. Cleo over there like this. What the? <laughs> so you see, marriage is very vital in our nation because it's the only thing God says shows the church. That's why it's under attack. And I feel bad. I can't, you know, you remember the rainbow? Rainbow used to be so nice. Now you can't even use the rainbow without somebody thinking something about you. That's right, that's right, yeah. I used to like the rainbow. Well, they took my rainbow. That's not right. That's not nice. You see, that's how it is with religious people. Just because you wear a cross, doesn't mean you're going to heaven. 40 ounce gold right here. That's like those rap guys. You ever seen them? All that gold. I killed your mother. I'm going to kill your sister. And they got a big old cross. You ain't going nowhere with that cross. Even the priest got a 40 ounce. <laughs> that 40 ain't getting you in nowhere. You can go to Party City and get a nun outfit and be a hooker on 42nd Street. Come on. God knows what's real. We got to, those of us that are real, we have to be real. Amen. Let the world know there is a difference. Yes. Amen. So, you know, when it comes time to pray without ceasing, do it. Pray without ceasing. Amen. Well, how do you do it? You figure it out. <laughs> what verse am I at? Four? Six? And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, somebody say the same night. Same night. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Now here he is lying there between two soldiers and the angel said, get up. You know, most people be like, nah, nah, man, nah, man. I got to go to court, man, tomorrow. I ain't going nowhere, you know. Nah, I got to do the right thing. No, 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 no. When God sends you deliverance, don't play stupid. He gets up and he walks out. But see, but the thing is, is this is what you need to realize, because I'm trying to teach you that you always have to be conscious that God is with you. He's thinking he's dreaming. <laughs> If he, was if he was awake, he probably would have panicked and didn't went. Didn't went. That wasn't English. Didn't go. He wouldn't have gone. Didn't went. That's my project. <laughs> you from Brooklyn, you remember that, right? Didn't went to the store. They don't do that in Australia. They speak over there. They speak English or Australian? <laughs> So we don't speak English here, we speak American. <laughs> we change it up. What verse am I on, y'all? Seven? Eight? And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy gar that garment about thee and follow me. In other words, this dude was naked. He said, Put some clothes on. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but he thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them on his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Now, when God's going to deliver you, that means everybody's expectation to hurt you is not going to come to pass. When people say bad things about you, you need to tell God, this is what they said they're going to do to me. This is what they expect to do to me. And Peter, he thought he was dreaming. The gates opened up. The angel didn't even talk to him after that. 
He didn't say, I didn't come here to talk to you. He said, I came, he didn't talk to you. He said, get up, put your clothes on. Follow me, walked out and left. People told me I was, I was talking to my angel. Who, who are you, Della Reese? <laughs> you people, how are you going to talk to an angel? Angels ain't talk to people, not that much. They came, did their job, and they book. Were well, you talking to? Who are you talking to? You better talk to the Lord. Leave them angels alone. Right now. Get you fired. You imagine that talking to the boss and, and you talking, you know, with those, what's those little people underneath the boss? Supervisors. You run your mouth with them supervisors, and the boss be like, yo, I want you to talk to me. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I'm saying this now, he thought it was a vision. God has been delivering you, and you've been thinking you've been seeing stuff. You ever been in Jersey City? You can't come to Jersey City without an angel. <laughs> you think you're walking around here by yourself? <laughs> as close as it is to New York? Man, the demon capital of the world. You think California got some devils? You ain't seen no devils until you've been to New York City. And they moved over here. <laughs> Them New York demons said, look, right across the water, people. It got too crowded for them over there. They said, let's get them Jersey demons. Them Jersey people. I'm making some sense. Peter didn't even know. See, he didn't even know it was an angel. There are things happening that you're not aware of, but you need to be aware. Hebrews says, be aware of entertaining strangers because some have entertained angels unaware. I'm not saying tell your kids to talk to strangers. I'm not even telling you to talk to them, but be cordial and be careful. Come on, because even Satan can be acting like an angel of light. How do you know if a person is of God and, and, and a, a person is of the devil? Can I tell you how you're going to know? Voices. They can fake the fruit. Anybody? Can, people are fake. You know, you can go to um, Michael's, get you a bowl of fake fruit. People can fake fruit now, but they can't fake the voice. You ever talk to Chris and they go praise God and you be like, mm. I sense a little snake in there. <laughs> and then somebody can say, what's up? You be like, yo, I didn't know you were saved. You can, you can tell once, once the heart opens up, you can smell it. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. You be like, you're a liar. See, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And that's how we discern. We discern spirits. And, and until they talk, they can fool you. Like me, when I, during the day, nobody know I'm a pastor. But you can't say I sinned. You follow me around, you ain't going to find no fault in me. I'm not God, but I, ain't, I don't do that no more. Amen. Amen. When I open up my mouth, they're going to be like, you go to church? That's the first thing they say. No, no, I, I know some people that go to church. <laughs> and when I was young, I used to look for, yeah, 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 I go to church. I was, no, no, people trying to set me up. No, no, I know people that go to church. I got to go. This message is taking too long. Verse 11, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews, I'll say it one more time. God's deliverance for you is to deliver you from the expectation of people. Anybody that has a problem with you, your deliverance is because they have said what they were going to do against you. And God said, not my child. Don't ever think that people making plans against you, God don't hear them. God's in there listening to their plans, looking at them laughing at them knowing that when you wake up in the morning you're going to pray and once you pray your angels will be dispersed and it will foil their plans but if you don't pray you might have that gap because late, earlier they caught James and cut his head off but they prayed for Peter and Peter got delivered I'm tired of praying for the same thing. Well, you know what? You better get untied and pray again. Hallelujah. Jesus prayed three times. You better go pray 3,000 times. It don't hurt to pray again. Amen. All it hurts is your pride. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I pray for the same thing for the last 
20 something years. And I'm going to keep praying until I don't have to pray for it no more. Don't mean that I didn't grow and get older and my hair got gray and I spent five hours to turn it black and brown. Just keep going. Where am I at? Verse 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname, whose, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together doing what? Say it again. Now, this is the key. You would think they're praying, they're expecting. Right? Verse 13. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, you, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. They're in a prayer meeting. Oh God, we prophesy protection over Peter and we lose Peter to be free. Thank you, Lord. Send the angels now, Lord. And our little girl said, yeah, Peter's outside. You know, you're mad. You're crazy. Must be his angel. Our prayers must didn't work. They must have cut his head off, too. Come on. Here they are in a prayer meeting. The girl told him he's outside, and they didn't believe it. See, and this is spirit-filled believers. These are not the disciples that were with Jesus who were afraid. Now these are the disciples filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Come on, I want you to help me. Don't think you're not going to have laughs in your faith. You got to remain constant. I mean, I remember, anybody here ever went to school? You know, they, they take attendance. You know, and if you're not, I didn't know that the reason why you fail because of lack of attendance because the requirement was a certain amount of hours. You had to, I didn't know that. I thought they didn't like you. You don't come here, we don't like you, you're going to get an F. A part of it was you have to be there a certain amount of hours. Many times you could take a little church vacation all you want. Say ain't going to take no vacation. He's going to set you up. Let you think everything is all right. Can, can, anybody ever heard eggs in a frying pan? You ever had eggs? In, no, web, they call them huevo, right? No. A huevo, that's Spanish for egg. Is that right? Right. Or is it un peo? No. <laughs> no. Nobody know what I said, so don't act like I said something. <laughs> See, now all the black people looking like this. Google Translate. <laughs> it ain't something I, it ain't, it's not like I didn't say it before now, now watch this so now you put the egg in a frying pan and don't turn it on it's not going to cook turn that fire on it'll start to cook the closer you get to Jesus the closer you start to cook it gets hot and you can't stay the same once the heat is on come on help me and even in church, a lot of times when you don't come to church, the church, church puts heat on you. These little crazy preachers be telling you some stuff, telling you to pray without ceasing, and you ain't praying at all. That puts some heat on you. Only <laughs> one person laughing. So that's why you go to church. You don't go to church for credit. I'm gonna go to church. You ain't go for what? You buy. You buy. <laughs> you go to church so you can learn what's next week attack. So Satan's going to attack me for what? Not praying. So I'm going to pray. Anyway, how I pray? Just talk. Ask for stuff. Beg all day long. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Glory, glory. Let me get a new car. That's praying. Just keep asking for stuff. At least you're constantly connected. Well, uh, doesn't that make me covetous? Aren't you needy? <laughs> You're so full of pride. You ain't got no job, no money. I don't want to ask for nothing. You, you're going to be poor and broke and helpful, helpless. Jesus said, pray that your joy might be full. You know what will make my joy full? A lot more money. And a lot more listening people. So I pray for more money and listening people. I'm going backwards. Going backwards. So you see, the closer you get to him, 
the hotter it is. And guess what? You know what? Now, man, I'm not tell you. I'm black. American, right? I didn't know we were sunburned. I didn't know that. So I went on my first vacation. I went to Barbados.